In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Stable Diffusion and how we can actually deploy it onto a HiveOS instance and start doing some AI rendering using existing HiveOS rigs. Now, the instructions I'm going to go through today are specific to HiveOS. However, Stable Diffusion will run on pretty much any Ubuntu instance that meets the specific Python requirements as well as hardware requirements. Technically, you can run this on CPU only. I don't recommend it though. Uh, I do recommend GPUs. They do support both NVIDIA and AMD GPU. You can use this to just benchmark really for AI if you want. Um, this will basically cover AI rendering for the most part. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're actually gonna, we have a uh, rig that's inside a mini cube case. So this is a micro ATX motherboard with a 5950X and two LeadTech 37, 3070 turbos. So that's what we're gonna be running with today. First thing you wanna do, make sure you unload your flight sheet. You do not wanna be mining and trying to render at the same time. Once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and remote into it. So to do that, I'm gonna use putty, but you can use shell in a box if you want. Once we're logged in, the first thing we want to do is we want to run an apt update. And I'm dealing with a fresh Hive OS instance. Uh, I did a Hive replace on this right before I recorded the video. So for me, the update may take a couple minutes. So we're going to go ahead and let this run. And now we need to run the command to actually update the packages that we need, or rather install the packages we need. And these are all gonna be required to compile uh, Python, which we will have to compile from source. We won't be using the package manager because we need a very specific version to make this work. Um, it Stable Diffusion does require a specific version and PyTorch requires it as well. The newer versions of Python can't support the AI rendering anymore that we're going to be needing to do. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be installing the LZMA library, which we need for this specific utility. So we're going to go ahead and run this install. And this may take a few moments. Uh, there are a bunch of packages that have to be installed here. And then we're going to run a wget, and we're going to download the Python installer. And the specific version we want is 3.10.6. So we're going to download that tar file. And then we're going to extract it. And then we're going to change into that Python directory. And then we're going to run the configure command, and we're going to enable optimizations. So just do dot slash configure dash dash enable hyphen optimizations and let that configure command run. And then now I'm going to run the make command Then we're going to run a make. I'm going to be using 30 threads here because I do have a uh, 5950X in this machine. So I'm going to utilize the majority of the threads there. Uh, if you don't have that many, you can reduce this number down, or you can just run it without the J command, and uh, it'll just take a little bit longer. And then we're going to run make alt install. The reason we're doing alt install is we do not want it to override the native HiveOS Python version. So it's basically going to run side by side with it. Right, once the install is done, if we run Python three hyphen hyphen version, you're gonna notice it's still sitting on 3.6.9, which is the HiveOS version of Python. So what we need to do is we just need to generate a alternative pointer, pointer rather, and that's what we're gonna do with this command. So we're gonna update the alts for Python three to point to 3.10, and we're gonna set this priority as zero so that it runs first. Now, if we run Python 3 hyphen hyphen version, you can see it's now picking up our new version of 3.10.6. So 
so now we have the dependencies installed. If we want to run stable diffusion, we can't run it under the user account, which is the root account. So what we need to do is we need to create a new user. So we're just going to do a add user, and I'm just going to call this account SVC. You can name this anything you want. Give it a password. And we're just going to hit enter through all those. You can enter those if you want. Hit yes to confirm. And now we want to make sure we add it to the pseudo group. So I'm going to do a user mod hyphen A for add, capital G for group. The group we want to add it to is sudo, and then our username is svc. And now we can switch to the svc account, so just do su space hyphen space and your username. Now we're in that user directory, and now we can run the installer script. And that's just going to be the bash to the GitHub uh, repository to the web UI shell script. So let's go ahead and run that. And this is going to download the repo, and then it's going to start installing all of the dependencies. And this will take a while. This can take uh, anywhere, probably up to 15 minutes. So just be patient. It's going to download a lot of files that is going to consume quite a bit of storage. Uh, it's probably going to download several files that are in the 3 to 5 gig range in file size. So just be patient with this. Uh, some of them will download faster than others. Once you get to this point, it basically tells you uh, right here that the web UI is running on port 7860, but it's currently under the local host IP. So what you want to do is just do control C, that's going to close it. And then um, we can do a CD into the stable diffusion web UI folder. And if we do an LS here, you're going to see there's this web UI shell file. What we're going to do is we're going to do a dot slash web UI dot SH space and we're going to do hyphen hyphen listen. What this is going to do is this is going to tell it to listen on all IPs so that you can access it uh, over your network. So that's what we're going to do. And it's basically going to restart it and all the dependencies and all the packages are already installed so this will go fairly quick and now you can see that it is running on port 7860 and so we should be able to get our IP address colon 7860 and get to it so we're just gonna copy this Oops. then we're gonna head on over to a web browser and we're going to paste in our IP address here, which is going to be, for me, it's going to be 192.168.1.127. Hit enter. And now we are brought to the Stable Fusion UI page. Now, before we start rendering a model, what I want to do is I'm going to leave this running in the background, but I'm going to duplicate the session. I'm going to log back in. And in this case, we can do user one on this one. What we want to do is we want to do a watch NVIDIA hyphen SMI. And this is going to show us our cards. And here you can see we already have uh, three and a half gigs is being consumed on our first 3070 turbo here. So it's already consuming quite a bit. And it hasn't really begun rendering anything yet. We're going to leave that open up in a window. In addition, I'm going to pull up, this will allow us to see the performance of the rendering jobs. So if we bring the UI back over, here we can see that we have a generate button. And the way this essentially works is all of our settings are down here. And we input text that we want it to use as a basis to render. And that's what it's called a prompt. And then negative prompt is once we render it, if we see something in the photo that we don't want, then we can specify that in the negative prompt and it will kind of try to exclude those things. So just as a baseline example here, let's just do, um, let's just do dragon. 
And I'm going to do 512, 512. I'm going to leave those as the defaults for now. Um, the larger you go, the longer it's going to take to render, uh, the more stress it's going to put on the GPU. And then same thing with sampling stuff. So let's go ahead and hit generate. And there you can see, so it rendered just a simple dragon and we told it to just render one. And if we hop on over here, we can see that we got, wow, that's super good. We got nine, nine and a half iterations a second. Uh, so in comparison, I did try running this on A2000s on risers and I was getting around two to three iterations a second. That's really good on that. Uh, but now let's throw something a little bit more complicated at it. Uh, let's do, um, we're gonna do a batch count of three. We hit generate, what this is gonna do is this is gonna run it three times. It's gonna give us three different images, obviously. And what we end up with, this first one is kind of a tiled view, but then if you just click these individual images, you'll get them. And you can see one of them is actually like a Magic the Gathering card. Um, but let's go ahead and do, um, let's do something like dragon, dragon flying uh, towards the moon, um, overlooking, a city. Hit generate now. Now we've given it some more parameters that we want it to do. And you can see it rendered that very fast. And again, we're averaging around nine and a half iterations a second, which is super good. And if we pull up the thumbnail view here, you can see the first one's not that great. Generally, in my experience, the first ones typically aren't that great. That's why I like to do batches of them. The second one looks better, but you see, we can see there's just like an extra wing kind of hanging out there. Um, and then same thing with this one. So not perfect, but what we can do is we can step up the sampling steps if we want. So we can do that, and I'm going to hit generate again. And here we can see we get some better examples now. So we go ahead and maximize this. Um, you can kind of see the city, you can see the dragon, you see the moon. Um, here's like a more of a cartoon style one. And then here's one actually above the moon, which is really cool. And now if we want to do different styles, we can do that as well. So we could say uh, comma, and I can do like cartoon style. And if I hit generate now, ideally, most of them should be in a cartoon style, as you can see. So we end up with kind of those style drawings, which are really cool. Uh, in addition, we could do something like Game of Thrones style. Hit generate. And now you're seeing something more along the lines of what you would see um, in like a Game of Thrones. You can see, um, you know, everything's kind of grayed out. It's got more of like a medieval look. Um, same thing with this one, right? You can kind of see the castle in the background. Uh, more of ancient architecture type things there. And then another thing we could do, we could do something like... Um, fire breathing dragon. Now it shouldn't be actually like throwing fire, but here you can kind of see you get more of that open mouth when you present that information. So there you can see one. So that one's pretty cool. There's another one. You can kind of see the red within the mouth. And the same thing there. 
And you can do it with all types of things. Um, it pretty much, it interprets it, generates the AI on the fly, or gener renders the image based on artificial intelligence um, on the fly. And these are all the different sampling methods you have. So if you want something more realistic, you could do something like 2M, uh, DPM++ 2M. And we could do something like um, woman holding an uh, Android phone. Here, let's do holding a futuristic Android phone. So you end up with a couple examples here. Um, phone image, or looking at the phone, and again, the, my experience, the first one's always pretty much a throwaway, which is why I recommend the batches. And if you want a better enhanced image on like the actual person, we can bump up the CFG scale. If we go ahead and run this again. And you can kind of get uh, get a feel for how that can adjust it. Now, um, this is really useful if you're trying to target a specific person. And now, let's change the dimensions. And this will kind of give you an idea of how impactful VRAM is. So I'm going to do a 1280 by 720. So it's going to be like a 720 picture that you would have for like a YouTube thumbnail, anything like that. And we'll go ahead and leave the sampling method as is for now. We're going to hit generate. This thing's going to take a while. But we can pop on over here and we can see we are now using 6 gigs out of the 8 gigs available VRAM. And what you'll notice is this only runs on the first card. But if you look now, the our iterations, we're now only doing 1.4 iterations per second. And that's because we've bumped that thing up tremendously um, in order to render a higher resolution photo. Let's hop back on over. You can see it's still rendering them. Okay, and they're done now, and you can see our RAM has dropped back down to 3.5. So we're using, um, you know, around 2.5 gigs of VRAM just while we were rendering these. But this can kind of give you an idea. Now we actually have um, widescreen formatted images. Be something like that. 